Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 60. Day 3060. 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition. Day 60, we are on page number 262. We will solve problem 13 and 14. Problem 13, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. You must also have the book in front of you so that you can read the problem yourself. Always make sure the book is in front of you. Turn to page 262, number 13. This is what the problem says. It says that we have a total of $3,000 that we are going to invest. Part of it we are going to put in an account that is going to pay us 10% simple interest. The rest is going to be put in the second account which is going to be put, which is, which is going to yield 8% interest, again simple interest, the rest of the amount. you understand? In other words, a total of 3000 is invested in the two accounts. We are further told that the total return in that one year that we had was $256 exactly. The question simply is, what was invested in each of these two accounts? Let's take a look at it. Again, as always, as always, it's an algebra word problem. Before you start anything at all, before you start a solution, we must define our unknown. We must have a clear definition of the unknown. So let's define our unknown. There is a solution. Let, let the amount invested at 10% be T dollars, T for 10%. If T dollars was invested in the account and in the account that yielded 10%, that that implies, that in turn implies that the amount that we must have invested at, in the account, the amount that we invested in the account that yielded only 8%, must be whatever was left over after we put the money in the first account but that gave us 10% and we invested T dollars in it. If we invested T dollars in it then the second account that yielded 8% we, uh, we must have invested whatever was left over from $3,000 which is 3000 minus T. Again it says the amount invested at 8% must be 3000 minus T because T dollars are invested in the first account. Now we, now we have our equation. And the equation that we know is that we are told that the 10% of T, T dollars, that we got in, in, the part, in the account that gave us 10% plus the 8% of the amount that we put in the second account which was 3000 minus T 8% of that account and 10% of this amount equals $256. That's it. All we have to do now is to solve this straightforward equation. All we have to do is solve this straightforward equation, which is exactly what we're going to do on the top of the board. <coughs> on the top of the board so that we have the room. We don't need problem, we know we don't need the problem anymore. Let's get rid of it. We don't need it anymore. But before we before we start up there something, let's let's rewrite this thing. Ten percent. Ten percent means over a hundred. Off means times. Off means time, and then we have t. So that's the first amount. Plus eight percent means eight over one hundred. Off off means times. Three thousand minus t. This amount has to equal two hundred and fifty six. What we're going to do is multiply this entire equation by 100. Multiply the entire equation by 100. If you multiply the entire equation by 100, and in order for us to do that, I need a little bit of room here, so I'm going to squeeze this out a little bit so you can see it. Even though, even though we don't need to show this baby step that we're about to show, I'm just doing it for your benefit in case. So we're going to take this entire equation and multiply by 100. So here's the first term. We're going to multiply this first term by 100. 
We're going to multiply the second term by 100. Then we're going to multiply this side of the equation by 100. And why are we doing that? We are doing this so that we can get rid of this denominator because it's annoying. So the denominator is now going to go away. This 100 is going to cancel out with that 100. And we are left with 10 times t, 10 times t plus 8 times this amount, 8 times 3000 minus t has to equal 256 with the two zeros, 25600. Do you understand? Let's pick up speed then. Now we'll, let's open the parenthesis. So here we have 8 times 3000 which is going to give us 24000 minus 80 and here we have 10t. 10t minus 8t is going to give us 2t. 2t, let's line it up properly so we don't get confused. So 10t minus 8t is 2t plus 24,000 has to equal 45,600. Let's subtract 24,000 from both sides. Let's subtract 24,000 from both sides. And we are done. 24,000 is going to cancel out, which means 2t must equal whatever is left over here, which is 600 and 1, 1,600, which means t must be 800. The amount of money that was invested in, in the account that yielded 10% was just $800, which in turn implies, which in turn implies that the money that was invested in the account that yielded 8% must be $3,200. 3,000 minus t obviously it's $3,200. Let's verify now, shall we? Very quickly, we're going to verify it. Verification is very st straightforward. 10% of $800, we are investing $800 in the account that pays us 10%. So 10% of $800 is simply $80. And now we have to do 8% of $3,200. 8% of, it should not be 32, it should be 22 because we only have $3,000. I made a mistake. We only have, we only have $3,000, so 3,000 minus 800 is $2,200, not 32. How do we figure out 8% of 22? It's very straightforward. Just take 22 and multiply it by 8. Six, 16, carry 1, 16, 17. One hundred and seventy-six. One hundred and seventy-six. Do hundred. Do hundred and seventy-six and eighty add up to two fifty-six because we are told we were told that we are in total of two fifty-six and they do. One hundred and seventy-six. One hundred and seventy-six. One hundred and seventy-six and eighty. Do indeed add up to two hundred and fifty-six that we told we are earned. And that's what it works out. It work. It's conf it, 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 it gives us the confirmation that we were looking for, that it is it is indeed yielding total of $256 because we earn 10% on the account where we put $800 and 8% in the account that 8% uh, in the account where we put 30, uh, $2,200. How did we figure out 8% 8% of $2,200 here? Did you understand this part? Instead of doing, okay, I'm going to show it to you so that you understand it as to what happened here. Instead of doing, instead of doing 2200 and then 8% would have been like this. Which what happens? 8% would have been like this, right? Instead of doing it like this, which is very cumbersome, what we have to understand is this. We ignore these two zeros, but we drop these two zeros. So we, we ignore two digits to the right. Similarly, here we have 0.08, there are two digits to the left. So they're going to negate each other. So instead of wasting time like that, just do 22 times 8 and it will give you the 8%. Did you understand? Let's do the next problem. Number 14. Again, make sure the book is in front of you. Do you understand? Make sure that you have the book in front of you and read the problem. 
to yourself from the book as I'm putting it in the blackboard. So here we are told that we have two cars. We have two cars. We are told that they traveled in opposite direction on a straight line at the constant speed. I'm not going to worry about any of this thing. You read the problem for exactly two hours. For exactly two hours. We further told that the, at the end of two hours. At the end of two hours, they were 200 and, I don't need a comma there, they were 200 and, eight miles apart. At the end of two hours, they were traveling in opposite direction at their respective speeds. And at the end of two hours, exactly, we were told that they were 208 miles apart. We are also told, We are also told that one car traveled one car traveled eight miles faster than the other than the other. The question simply is what were their respective speeds? What were their speeds? What were what were the speeds? Again, before we do any work at all, we must define the unknowns. We must always define the unknown before we start the work. So let's do that, shall we? Here's the solution. If you like, you can always pause the video and give it a shot yourself and then compare your work against the work that you and I will do together in a second. You can also do that. Just pause the video and try it. So here's the unknown. Let the speed of car A a miles per hour a miles per hour mph a we're going to call these two cars a and b and if that's the case if car a is going at a miles per hour then that in that that in turn implies that the speed of car b must be must be what well we are told that one car traveled eight miles faster than the other. So if car A is going at A miles an hour, car B must be going A plus eight miles per hour. So far so good? Very good. How far apart? Next thing we need to understand is that they are, how fast, how fast are they getting apart from each other? They are getting apart from each other. They are getting apart from each other. At the rate of, at the rate of what? Well, one is going, let's, let's, let's erase the top part here. One is going in this direction at A miles per hour. The other one is going in the opposite direction at A plus 8 miles per hour. They're getting apart from each other in one hour. For example, for example, if car A is going at 30 miles an hour, which means in, in one hour it will go 30 miles, which is why it's called 30 miles per hour. If car A is going at 30 miles an hour, car B must be going 38 miles an hour. And therefore, in one hour, they will be 30 
plus 38 miles apart. They are getting apart from each other at the rate of a plus a plus 8 miles per hour. The speed of the first car is the speed of the second car. Or to put it more succinctly, 2a plus 8 miles per hour. Per hour. That's how far apart they, they are getting each hour. Let's pick up from the top. So we're going to pick up from, from here at, at the top. We are also told that in two hours they traveled 208 miles. 208 miles, we are told they traveled in two hours. Well, if they traveled 208 miles in two hours, their in turn implies. That in turn implies, if you were to divide both sides by 2, that in turn implies that they must be traveling at 104 miles in 1 hour. But we know how far apart they are getting in 1 hour. They are they're getting apart this many miles in, in 1 hour. Which in turn implies that 104 must equal this amount, 2a plus 8. And that's it. All we have to do is solve for a. We can erase all of this thing now. That's it. Bring the 8 to this side. So 2a must equal 104 minus 8. 104 minus 10 would have been 94. So it's going to be 96. It's going to be 96. 2a equals 96. Let's divide both sides by 2. So 2 is going to go away. 9 has 4 2's. Remaining one goes and joins the 6 and becomes 16, and 16 has 8 twos. There you go. A equals 48 miles, which, which, means, which means that car B was going at 48 plus 8, or 56 miles per hour. There we go. We found, we found the respective speeds. Car A was going at 48 miles per hour, and if car A was indeed going at 48 miles per hour, then car B must be going 8 miles faster than that, because that's what we are told, and hence car B is going at the speed of 56 miles an hour. That's all. I'll see you tomorrow. In the next video, we'll do problem number 15 and 16. Problem number 15 and 16, and beginning with problem number 17, we get into geometry. We get into geometry problem. So we have two more uh, word problems left, algebra word problem left, 15 and 16 which, as I just said, we'll do in the next video. Alright? Bye now.